Okay, getting started. Uh, by the way, with this this awesome music by my friend Sam Davidson, uh, those weird sounds, it sounds like papers moving in the background, that's actually in the original recording, not me fumbling around. I just, every time I hear it, it makes me laugh. Okay, everybody ready? Okay. Hey everybody, how are you doing today? My name is Michael Markowski and I'm going to be showing you how to draw, specifically draw hands. We have them, everybody has them, well most people who are fortunate to still have them have them. So they are waiting to be drawn at all times. They can draw, but they can also be drawn. So. Um, yeah, unlike having to draw our self-portrait, we need a mirror. We don't need anything, any extra tools to draw our hands except a pencil, I guess, right? So, which brings me um, to today's thing. You know, I always, I know I kind of repeat myself, but I notice that there's, you know, like, a, I don't know, somewhere between 50 to 100 people tune into the show afterwards, and I don't know if they're, if I've, they've been watching this whole time or it's their first time watching. So, uh, as I always say, I, I like to use some colored pencils for this class, just so you could see the different layers of my drawings. Um, uh, but you don't have to use colored pencils. You can just use a, a regular, like this tiny little pencil from the library. Maybe I'll just actually show you a couple of the cool things I have in here. Where am I? Where's my views from above? Uh, where am I? Well, let's go to this one. I haven't used this in a while. Um, so here's my my pencil case. Um, and inside my pencil case, I, I do have an extra pen just in case I want to um, do a fine drawing of something. but. Here you could see just, look, I'll get to some of these things, the different pencils, right, that I have. I got an HB pencil, is that, can you see some of those under there? HB, 5B, 2B, 9B, 7B, um, another HB, HB is great, that's why we always use them. Um, here's another HB. And this one's so worn. I think it's HB2. So here's my basic set. You notice I don't have a, an H um, or a 2H or a 6H or a 7H, even though they often come in those sets. I have a couple of those around here somewhere. I don't know where they are. Um, but it's just because I don't, I, I like getting darker with my drawings. I prefer to go dark rather than to go light, and when we go into the H, 2H, etc., we are generally lightening the color or the, the density of the pencil crayon so that they get almost invisible by the time you get to 9H. Anyway, what else do I have in here? Well, there's another 2B. The, the brand doesn't matter. These are the Stadler brand, these blue pencils, which I just adore I, I don't maybe since probably goes back to being a kid and maybe my parents got me a Stedler set and I was hooked on that brand very early as I'm sure they're they're happy to hear um, but there's nothing there's no necessarily great difference between that and what is this fine tech or any of the other hundreds of different pencil manufacturers um, other fun little things, just out of a random detour here, is this is a charcoal, or no, sorry, this is a graphite stick, and you can see I've also, so it's literally just a chunk of charcoal, exactly like what's in here, but it's, you can see, way thicker, and I've wrapped some duct tape around it just so that my fingers don't get super dirty every time I use it. Um... Uh, if you've seen the videos here on my YouTube site where I'm drawing in the fighter plane going at the sp faster than the speed of sound, you'll see me drawing with these um, because I had to wear these these leather gloves that were insulated um, 
so that the blood wouldn't pool in my hands and all that kind of crazy stuff. That's a whole other, whole other story. But so I wanted something thicker that would, and I actually really like drawing with these tools, but in this class, very few of you have them and you'd probably think it was really strange. These other, these are extender sticks that you can put on a pencil, right? And then you have this long pencil, which seems kind of ridiculous. Um, but it is fun to shade like this um, because it's you're gonna get a super delicate mark, right? Because I mean, you just, just think of the weight of this thing on a on a piece of paper is you know it's like a leaf, right? So you can get really subtle kind of shading. Um, so those are those. I've got a couple of white pencils so that if I wanted to draw a highlight on something I can add a little bit of white in it or conversely and this is going to go to an image we're going to look at here in a second if I want to draw on colored paper having a little bit of white actually works really well for that purpose what else do I have a couple other little things I've never if somebody could find out where you get these I don't even remember where I got these but these are little plastic like almost pen caps that I got and so these are they don't some if the pencil's too sharp, it doesn't fit on there very well. But this is great if I want to, if I'm going to a museum and I want to do some sketching and I've got some pencils in my pocket, that the pencils, first of all, aren't going to leave a whole bunch of residue in my pocket and then you put something in there and then you got charcoal all over your fingers or graphite. Um, but they also help keep the tip from breaking too. So speaking of sharpening, um, here's a couple of razors and razor blades so that I can sharpen you know something larger like this um, or if I'm camping and I want to sharpen a uh, marshmallow <laughs> stick I have that pencil sharpener and erasers and these funny uh, uh, peanut erasers oh and just lastly here's two uh, little foam things that can slide over a pencil for that extra little grip I don't know about you guys, I've been drawing for, you know, I don't know, professionally for 20 years and then 20 years before that, but after drawing for a while, my hands get sore. You know, I've got calluses on my fingers here from drawing so much, you know, there's slight deformity in my fingers. So anything that just softens that, which is why actually drawing with a larger tool is nice because it's, you're, you're not pressing so small and, or so hard on such a small surface. Anyway, I didn't plan on <laughs> that digression, but I, I just, I, I noticed that people tend to ask uh, questions about the tools and what tools to use. So but that might make a nice uh, little temporary detours. Um, okay, so I was told you I was gonna show you an image. So let me show you an image. Okay, so what we're looking at on the screen here is uh, obviously a Wikipedia page showing this hand, which is probably the most famous drawing of a hand that I can think of and probably that anybody can think of. Uh, this is a study for the hands of an apostle um, by Albrecht Dürer. Dürer is sort of known as the Leonardo of the North. He was a uh, German um, painter, artist. When did he look like 17 or 1460 to, or what is this? 1471 to 1528. Um, you can see how closely this resembles this image here that uh, um, a painting attributed to Leonardo the oh, I just lost the title of it the that that one that sold for 500 million dollars to some Saudi prince uh, just a few years ago uh, the Salvador Mundi with the globe in his hand so uh, some people even said that maybe that painting attributed to Leonardo was actually by Albrecht Dürer um, anyway why I'm showing you this picture of a hands is 
If you've ever gone to a Christian church before, you've probably seen an image of these hands um, reproduced. You've probably seen a, you know a little icon of hands praying at some point. You know in the in the uh, brochure. Uh, it's not, not a brochure. It's a what do they call those things? The uh, anyway. Um, so this image, which was done in 1508, 512 years ago, all right? This is 512 years ago. Let that sink in. And this drawing is still an absolutely incredible, jaw-dropping, amazing drawing. The title obviously is Study for a uh, Hands of an Apostle, although I think many people today, including the, the owners of this artwork at the Albrecht Museum in, in Vienna, believe it was actually like he made this drawing and then he hung it in his studio so that when people came by they would go like wow that's an amazing drawing i'm going to hire you to do some work for me because i really love your style so he may have actually used this for his own promotional purposes which is what uh you know this 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 would have been hit the landing page on his website if he was alive today, right? To help uh, get some clicks, right? And likes and all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, anyway, this... I, I was... Well, let's see. I, I was thinking, do we want to try to draw this drawing by the end of today's class or not? Uh, I'm going to think about it. We'll see how far we can get, but... Um, it would that would be an ideal place for so anyway. Well, let's let's get there, but we got a little bit of a ways to to go before we get there. So, speaking of which, let's grab our sketchbook and we're gonna just leap right in here and do some drawing. So, as always, I'm gonna use this other magenta pink. Okay, I think we did this a couple of months ago, and. Actually, before, I'm going to use an even different color here. So, a, a couple of months ago, we traced our hands. I think I just did this as a warm-up exercise. So, let's try doing this uh, again. I'm going to trace my hand. And actually, well, let's do one with the fingers open, since I've already got one finger. Um... I wonder if this is going to be dark enough for you to see. Okay, I think I moved my wrist here, so I have this ridiculously thin <laughs> wrist. Let me see if I can um, align this. Some there we go. So this is a, just a warm-up that we're going to see. Here we go. Um, because I want to look at, and you can go in just like I'm doing here and kind of fill in any kind of blanks. Because I want to, we're going to kind of work our way backwards so that we can get the structure of the hand. Right? So it doesn't matter if you've got a little er so called errors there. If, you, if it drives you nuts, you're all just. Personally, I. I kind of I like seeing all of those so-called mistakes in my drawing, but just for clarity purpose for people at home, so they can see what's going on. I'm just gonna erase that. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to figure out. Okay, let's say I ask you to draw this hand right from the go without uh, knowing anything I'm about to teach you, right? And and without tracing it either, right? So if we just if I just said, okay, here's your hand take this hand and put it on the paper, like draw it on the page, right? Where would most of you begin? Like maybe if you, if you haven't watched any of the previous episodes, you might think, okay, well, maybe I'll start with the thumb. Okay, I'm going to start sketching the thumb and I'm going to get the fingernail on and I'm going to come up here and 
Maybe I'll do this, and I'm going to work my way around until I got the whole hand on, right? If you've seen any of the episodes I've done in the past, what I talk about is finding the structure first and building from the structure outwards. Or, of course, you could use the envelope method that I made a whole episode on that uh, I don't know, probably a month ago, showing how to kind of, you know, the block in method where we would kind of work, create like the outer shape and then kind of start carving in. So there's all those, there's a few different ways to go about this. But what I want to show you today is the structure so that you can start drawing hands from your imagination. So let's say, I'm trying to think of some crazy scenario where you didn't have your hands available, but then you wouldn't have a hand to draw your hand. So uh, although it is quite difficult to draw your hand drawing, which I've done many times, tried to try to, anyway, blah, blah, blah. So. Let's look for the structure in here. So one of the things that we can notice right off the bat is that inside here, there's kind of like an arc, right? So, and it's, it's almost like looking at the hand itself is gonna be a little bit difficult. So we're gonna look at the tracing here because when we look at, at the actual hand itself, you know, we've got all of the wrinkles, rings, hairs, uh, you know, nails that you may or may not be happy with or blah, 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 right? And it gets a little overwhelming. So we're going to kind of get rid of some of that and we're going to look at this. So the first thing is this arc here. Now, this is not a perfect, this is not an arc that, where can I draw this on something else that uh, should, oh, I've just been cleaning up here, and where did I put paper? <laughs> okay, here's an extra sheet of paper. So, this is not, I was going to, is not a so-called perfect, although this isn't a perfect arc. It's not like that. It's kind of a little bit more like this. Do you notice? So if this is, let's say, a part of the circle, right? So it's, because what's happening, these these two fingers, and we can even do this on the top, but maybe that's a little bit more evident here. See this arc? And actually this arc becomes more and more prominent the further we get away from the fingers. And it's still that way when we do this, right? You see how it really condenses? So we have this kind of arc like that. So it's not, so it's not like this. It's more like, ah, I'm trying to think of how to explain that, right? It goes kind of like this, as opposed to, that makes sense? Okay. Anyway, so we have this, the, this arc. So this is important to kind of just think about the length. Now, obviously, not everybody's fingers are the same length. And there are some people that have longer fingers and shorter fingers. And some people have a shorter middle finger. But again, we're not talking about, we want to try to think of like everybody, kind of like the, the general generic hand. And then from there, we can make those little adjustments. So I'm sure there's probably one or two of you right now who are going, well, this doesn't quite apply to me. Well, um, sure, that's great. But then, you know, maybe most people are going to have something around this. We want to be able to to not just draw our hands, but everybody else's hands as well. Okay, so how about even just while we're right here, I'm also gonna put my hand back and I'm just gonna make a little notation as to where these wrinkles on my fingers are. All right, so these wrinkles are actually the joints of my finger, right? So I did the top joint. So you can see I'm kind of making marks on both sides here. All right, so then I can then just connect these. All right, 
So then do you, do you notice again, we have, if we start down here, we have this arc. Now obviously, this kind of shows us where it would be, or it's kind of, right? Um, whereas these all kind of nicely kind of align, right? Okay, so that's really important to understand that. And obviously, when we're going to draw the inside of the hand here in a moment after we understand this structure. Okay, so then now let's figure out this box-like form, right? And even maybe before we go in there, let's just, many of us, you know, especially if we get a little bit older, we might even have kind of a little bit of a wrinkle on our our hands here. So let's, just like we did here, let's see if we can identify those wrinkles. Right now, depending on how you put your hand on your sketchbook, it's going to look a little bit different. Again, this just helps us figure out, like, this right here is kind of where the this bone in the wrist is. Actually, I've broken that bone a few times. Um, <laughs> so, we want to, now, we want to draw this inner shape in here. Now, this side here, it comes down, and then we can see that this one, we're going to get to the thumb here in a second, kind of comes down. And if my hand was a little bit more straight, you could see this line wouldn't be on an angle, it would be more like this, right? So, do you see that there's almost looks like, you know, like a loaf of bread kind of thing, right? <laughs> Not, forget about this top thing, but just imagine this kind of thing, right? So this is the, the muffin tin or the bread tin that, that comes in. So we've got this shape, we've got these arcs on the top, and then we want to do the thumb. All right, so let's do the thumb. And hopefully people are, are, are not just watching, but kind of playing along at home so that they can get some of this stuff on their own. All right? So here's the other bone here, or the, where the thumb bends. We want to articulate that. Okay, so maybe I'll just wait a moment here for Purity to catch up. I get a lot of people telling me I go a little bit too fast. Okay, so from here, this would be a little bit more obvious in the if we're drawing the palm of our hand. And maybe I should have started that way, but we're already deep into this one. I mean, this kind of applies to our your other hand, right? We can see these kind of pads in our hand, right? So up top, we have, and even though I'm drawing, um, the top of my hand here, just articulating these things is also very helpful, right? So if I go back here, on this side, we have another pad. And then here, we also have this kind of pad in our thumb. All right. Some people draw this as a perfect circle some people kind of make it a bigger oval or that avocado kind of shape that we've or egg shape that we've used a few times either way these this basic structure here right okay so this is really important this kind of ball joint on the thumb and we can well we'll, we'll get to it. the next thing i want to do is i want to draw how the, the shape of this thumb. And I think, as we'll, we'll see throughout, when we're drawing hands out, just like when we're drawing any other rest of the body, I think it's a good idea to exaggerate things ever so slightly 
both so that you can learn it and so you can really see it. Uh, and then it's always easier to tone things down. So when it comes to the thumb, what we want to do is I'm going to make these kind of arcing shapes here. So we have kind of another um, joint in our thumb here, right? So I'm going to make these kind of arc shapes here. So you see these kind of three things, which again, I'm going to draw the bones in here in a little bit. Not that you have to, but, and then you can see we have this shape here inside the, the hand. All right. So one, two, and then we have this arc. Now, right now it looks like a claw. We're gonna go over this in a minute. So it's just seeing this shape. Okay. Now, likewise, um, what, you know, we can, we're gonna draw the shape of the fingers in here in a minute, but I think knowing and understanding the bones in the figure in the, in the hand is, is helpful. So just like I did here, I'm gonna, Kind of draw this out just a little bit. All right, because it's kind of let me see what's a good color for bones. Um, and then we'll just kind of cap these off here. Because it's always important, just like any other part of the body, to remember that inside our hands are, in our hands, I don't know how many, but it's like 50, 60 little bones in here. But in here, and you don't have to draw this, but just so to kind of help you imagine, I'll just kind of you know, draw a couple fingers in here. You have these little bones that looks something like that, all right? So there are these, and then they're covered with muscle and then fat, right? So understanding what this looks like can help you create your own style. So maybe before I wanna move on, uh, let me, Pull up. Let's. Um, uh, I'm gonna bring up Egon. Egon Schiele is another famous um, uh, artist. Lived also another Northern European artist, uh, Austrian artist, and one of the things that is kind of most unique in my mind anyway let me see if I can get a nice uh, is the way that he draws hands and this is not the best example I, again I'm going a little off script I didn't think about bringing some of these things up but oh here's a good, I th think I don't think this is actually a drawing he did it looks like a drawing inspired by him I'm oh, gonna get these fingers no nope. Where did that go? Um, this image is on the screen right there, but you can see how bony these fingers are, right? That's a particular quality of his style of drawing, which is also used a lot, or was used a lot in like uh, comic books like Tales from the Crypt and, um, which I, I have a few of these back here, but I'm not gonna drag them out, but kind of in these 1950s horror comics uh, uh, that, you know, often had these, you know, walking dead vampire uh, zombie kind of characters, living dead kind of thing, who are, you know, rotting away. So they would, you know, the flesh is rotting. So we really see these bony kind of figures, right? Um, but he's somebody who r really kind of nailed this more skeletal style of, of drawing hands. 
Um, let me just see uh, if there's a Picasso. One of the things I like about Picasso is one of the, is the way that he draws hands. Like, so you can see this is the exact opposite, like almost very generic hands in a way. Like we don't have any of the bony qualities of the fingers. They're very um, like thick fingers, kind of they have this workman-like kind of quality. Um, well, like, I mean, but think about how people, this is, I have never seen this image before, cast of Picasso's left hand, that's so interesting. So you can see that he's got kind of very, you know, big fingers, you know, again, like workman's hands, as my grandfather used to, like farmer's hands. Um, uh, you know, in this famous photograph where the, the bread looks like his fingers. Um, I'm trying to think, okay, here's one of the other images I'm looking at, like, so there was a period of time in the early 1920s, they call it like the neoclassical style of uh, Picasso's, where he was drawing a lot of these figures that looked like Renaissance figures, and um, so I just I just wanted to kind of point out that the, the, the bony quality is not something you have to embrace, but he would have definitely studied you know the structure of, of the of the hand and, and knew all about the bones and kind of precisely ignored that going for kind of a thicker fuller kind of look uh, but I digress so let's come back to this okay so if I wanted to take this drawing and then you know I can if I wanted to be like uh, well let's just sort of draw it more more like maybe I would see it so then we kind of go into the we can you put your hand maybe to the side which let's bring this view up all right so if I was to kind of put my hand to the side right I can see kind of how my hand might kind of swell out a little bit depending on how much pressure right when I put pressure on here you can see this oops kind of fatty tissue in my hand kind of presses outward right so how much of that do I want to capture All right and then I'm not gonna I'm gonna kind of smooth around these uh, and so it's gonna be a lot more like my my original tracing of my hand but it allows me to kind of kind of just emphasize those joints a little bit more and especially when we're drawing hands in action or from different angles being able to show that you know a little bit about that internal structure just makes those fingers more believable so it's kind of hard to tell because I got a lot of lines here but is just ever so slightly kind of kind of bow out and then bow out and in. All right, same thing as we come around to the thumb All right, and then I'm just gonna kind of clip this edge now obviously if you've got long fingernails we would see that nail kind of coming off So this kind of looks like an x-ray of my hand, which is good because that means we're showing the structure of the hand. Um, in a previous episode, again, I said that you could use your hand to practice shading. So if I wanted, I could then sit here and start drawing my fingernails and the wrinkles and I could try to shade my hand. And so to give it that volume, it looks like it's popping off the page. I could also, I could even literally trace my shadow onto the page and then shade that in as well because that's gonna a shadow is really gonna help show the, the volume of it and, and the thickness of those fingers right and where the light is coming from etc okay so let's go to well maybe I'll leave this here just take a quick look at, at the comments see if there's um, people talking about drawing um, uh, 
people had difficulty with the character design, coming up with characters. Um, so maybe I'll talk about that as we draw a little bit later on. I'll flash that are we stuck. I love, I love everybody in the comments um, helping problem solve for one another because they know that I'm not reading this thing all the time. That's great. Thank you, everybody, for doing that. Okay, so let's go to another page here. And this time I'm going to draw the inside of the hand. And maybe... Um, should I turn? Because I'm just thinking... Let's let, we'll draw it this at, at at full scale. I was thinking maybe we'll draw them. We'll, we'll as we go. What we're gonna do some smaller scale drawings here for sure. But I think um, at this stage, just for people who are learning, um, it might be helpful to see a one to one here. Okay, so my hand is being hidden by that. So I'm just going to. Well, here, how about I'm going to draw it a little bit lower. And let's kind of go back. Now, we're rather than me tracing my hand, I'm going to try drawing my hand. This time I'm drawing the inside of my hand. Um, and so this can kind of work for, you can kind of, you've kind of got this hand this way and this hand this way on this page. And then let's do this version here. If you wanted, if you really did want it to kind of uh, trace it to, to try to get get it right, you could do that. I'm going to draw it. Let's. Uh, I don't like that view because my. Uh, it's just. Let's just go straight sketchbook for this here. Okay. So I'm putting my hand down here, and I'm going to draw it nice and big. Okay. So the where I'm going to start is with this kind of bread shape here. So I'm going to try to draw the interior here. So I'm going to draw this shape. And if we look here, we can kind of see it kind of arcing up and then down. All right, so arcs up and then it's a little bit lower on this side. All right? And maybe this time I'll, I'm also going to draw my hands closed. So we have one drawing the hands wide open, one hand kind of closed, so we'll, we'll get that. And do I want to do one with the thumb? How about, uh, well, I'll get to we'll think about the thumb when we get to it. So um, here's our kind of our bread. I'm just going to kind of continue. So let's say if my fingers were spread out, this would kind of continue outward, kind of like that right when they're kind of together right they're going to kind of form almost like this like an arc kind of coming back you see that so then we can also draw this same thing here so let's we're going to repeat it how about i'll just draw it big and wide as if my fingers were spread out you can see Kind of a little bit more of a dramatic kind of plunging here. As the fingers are together, this becomes even more extreme. All right. Okay. Now, generally, our fingers are all about the same distance apart, right? So we can literally make a line right in the middle and say, okay, this is this line between those fingers. And then we can divide this here and then this here. All right. So even at this stage, we can kind of say, well, this looks good. I like that finger and this one and this one. Now we're getting a little bit thick. So maybe I'm just gonna trim this down a little bit. Okay, so then let's look at these different kind of arcs again. So it's kind of like dividing them into three. All right, 
so this just helps us now obviously they're this is not how the folds are, they're all, they're going to be kind of perpendicular to these lines but this kind of helps us i'm not even looking at my fingers by the way i'm just trying to get okay so i'm looking at the drawing now i'm just going to look at my hand to see how how closely aligned i am in here all right so got this version i'm just gonna get my head out of the way to Right, so I'm pretty bang on here. Here, this one needs to go a little bit lower. Right, I can just look across here. So actually, it needs to go even lower than this one. Right, and then this one, maybe even lower. Right, so that same thing up here, up here, lower again. And this is going to be different for every single person watching, right? Um, now, look at this. This line on my finger, they're almost the same. So this is telling me that this line should be somewhere actually here. And the top of my finger is going to be up here, meaning this one is going to have to come down even lower. So it's going to be different for each person as you work on this. But then, so let's try this. So once, if I've... Um, this is getting a little confusing, all these lines on here, isn't it, right? So I'm just going to maybe darken the ones as I've settled on them. Again, this is a warm-up, so... So if we just imagine if I put some of these arcs on here... So this means this part of my hand, just my structure of my hand, might be a little bit lower. All right. And then it's going to round. So again, I'm not, I'm, I'm looking a little bit at this hand for inspiration, but. So actually this looks like it's a little bit higher. This may be a little bit higher. Either way. Okay. So we've got that part. Now let's look at, we've got this kind of top pad. All right, we've got, you can't really see this except when you kind of like scrunch up your hand, you've got this kind of ball shape here. And then we've got this thing, right? Okay, so man, let's do our, the hand closed, right? We can always, I think you know how to draw the other, the, the thumb open like that. So now let's investigate this. Might be even easier to start up higher. Right? So if I think of like where does this tip of my thumb match up? Right? There's that. Right? And then where's this next joint? Right? You can even kind of compare. Okay, these are all all of these bones are fairly closely aligned in terms of size, right? So um, I can kind of like, okay, is this one, is my thumb, be a little bit bigger. So there's this arc, right? Maybe I'm exaggerating a bit, but and then we got another one here, right? Um, and then let's do the outside. So on this side, Got another one of these arcs. All right. Okay. So, and then we can draw the wrist down here, right? Now, just compare. Now, maybe before we move on, just looking at you can be obviously copying my hand. 
but maybe look at your own hand and see if there's any adjustments you want to make at this point. Right, so I'm just looking at my drawing here. Well, my wrist isn't quite so thin here. In fact, it's kind of coming out. So I'm gonna widen that part of my drawing. Um, you know, and I'm also, let's, I'm going to put my ring in here because that can be really helpful to kind of see kind of where some of the, the bends are. If you wanted to kind of put in some of these wrinkles that you, you would have in here, the, the things that a palm reader might read, that can also be helpful. I'm not going to do that though. So, a little bit awkward here the hand. Let's um, take a second to have some tea. Oh. Um, okay, so now, how are we doing on time? Okay, so I think we're gonna take this structure, maybe we'll do a few small drawings of hands after this, and then let's, let's see, I think we could probably do a little bit of that Albrecht Dürer here. So, now, let's just kind of contour out, maybe I will go back to this view. Um, I'm gonna go start with my thumb and just kind of rounding some of these sharp edges. And I don't, I don't know how anybody else's hand is, but you can see that, you know, my fingers, when I pull them together, right, like they're kind of leaning bends in, right? Rather than just being kind of straight, they kind of bend together. I don't know why they, they do that, but... All right, so this curving... Oh, my head in the way. <laughs> um... Okay, same thing here. Even this finger team. So you can see how like you know, that's uh, Spock, you know, live long and prosper. Like these fingers are pointing inward and then these fingers kind of point inward to kind of create this, like these kind of arcs in here. So just kind of emphasize that a little bit. Looking at the tops here on my fingers there, those two fingers are very close. Okay. Now again, you know, if I'm looking at this, I do feel like the fingers I've drawn in my drawing are a little bit long, right? Compared to the thumb anyway, right? They just feel a little bit wide and a little bit long. So, you know what? I'm just gonna, ex I'm just gonna enlarge my thumb a little bit because it's gonna be a little bit faster than redrawing all those fingers. So, Maybe you had the opposite situation. Maybe your thumb was too big and you're gonna shrink that down a little bit. Now, if I was shading this, I could use some of this as part of the shadow in here, right? This just becomes part of that, that part of the drawing, right? Okay, so um, I'm not going to draw too much of the interior here. That's something that you could do in your own time. But actually, I, what I would do, the difference between, let's say, this, when I have my hand here, is I don't see too much. Like, I, I see maybe even a little bit of skin kind of overlapping a bit, right? Um, 
you know, there's, I can draw all those wrinkles in there and, and the wrinkles on, on the, the, my knuckles and all that. On the interior, however, there's much more pronounced kind of line here, right? So that is kind of one way that you can show the difference between, you know, the in the palm of your hand versus the back of your hand. My mother's saying she missed the class. There's water in the basement. Oh, flooding again. Oh, that's exciting. Ah, we, well, I guess at least it's not happening in the middle of winter, which is a whole other problem of itself. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Mom, by the way. <laughs> okay, so let's, um, let's take... And again, if you wanted, you could do this by just trace. So let's see how close I am here. Obviously, you know, my th I think my thumb, the way I drew it, was pretty close, my originally, to the actual size of my fingers. Now it's obviously bigger because I enlarged it. And you can see how much larger the fingers were compared to, or actually, well, now that I bring this up, that, that would be about where, so that, that a little bit bigger here. Everything was a little bit, I drew my fingers a tiny bit bigger than they were. Okay, so that might be kind of a fun exercise to try. If you want to repeat this, trace your hand and draw and fill in the blanks and then try doing it again from scratch. So let's kind of just put a little bit of this together and draw, um, nom, nom, nom. let's do this, which is the best way? How about rotate the sketchbook? So that all fit in there. Let me just zoom out a bit. Oh, and, you know, I saw an interesting question that Peter left uh, last week about doing a little tour of the studio and showing all the different equipment here. That's definitely something I want to do, um, but I, uh, that would probably be a separate video because I'm not sure everybody's in. Tr I'm, I love watching videos of that kind of stuff, but I'm sure there's some people who could really care less. But I totally agree with you, Peter. I, that's a great idea. So thank you for sharing that. Okay, so let's um, let's just divide this page into um, maybe actually. I, I was gonna do it like this because, well, you can. It's up to you. When I'm watching from home, how you want to do this. Let's let's take this, and we're gonna speed it up a little bit, just so that you can see um, a little bit more of the structure. And we're not gonna worry so much about like the details. We're gonna shrink these hands down. So let's start out. Uh, let's say I'm gonna draw. You know what I'm gonna do is. I'm gonna try drawing both right and left hands, inside and outside. So let's do that. So this is going to be, how about I even label these? Uh, this will be, I feel like my head is in this more than it's ever been before. Left hand, um, back, and then let's say left, and palm or inside, inside, outside, back, front, whatever you want to think about. So we got this shape here, right? Kind of a slightly tapered kind of V shape, right? Or our bread here. Um, how about we'll start, we'll kind of go in, a, because there's no best way to do this. You don't have to draw the fingers before the thumb, so I'll just kind of demonstrate that right here. So we've got our thumb. This first kind of uh, bone, just like, like right here. You know, it's pretty close after this little circle that's kind of right here. All right, so we've got this, this bone, this bone, this bone. Here, 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 and then here, here, 
this kind of just kind of does tend to kind of roll into one. So we've got the thumb. Let's put the wrist down here. Okay, and then let's let's kind of spread these fingers out, and then we're gonna have. And then let's kind of I'm gonna open these fingers up just a little bit. See, I'm also kind of tapering them down just a bit. So that we have... Gonna kind of quickly go over these. <laughs> Maybe let's go over with a different color here. So I'm gonna. So that kind of second pass I do, you know, I'm getting more, you know, refining things as I go. All right, I can kind of curve those fingers in a little bit. So this here, maybe that thumb could even come out even a little bit more, quite frankly. Okay, so let's do the left hand this way. So let's got, we're going to do this curve, but kind of the opposite. Okay. Notice I'm not even using, I'm not even looking at this hand because I want to try to develop the ability to see this on its own. Right, one, two, three. Let's make my thumb bigger. All right, um, let's, how did I do this one? That hand, fingers open, so let's keep this, maybe I'll even spread my fingers even further apart. All right, so again, we have It's like this web in here. All right. Okay. So then I'm just going to, let's say, start from the middle here. I'm just going to make these fingers go apart. Okay. And then let's... Uh, And don't worry about, see I have to make that middle finger a little bit bigger. Don't worry so much about getting the perfect proportion. You know, like, it's... I'm making that thumb needs to be a bit bigger. Or 
Also, you know, when we're you're drawing the interior of the hand, you're going to see these folds more than you would on this side. On here, I might just have forget my fingernails. Okay, so let's repeat this. Uh, with our right hand. Now I'm, I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna have to. Be, I'm trying to draw my right hand while I'm drawing, right? So it's a, we're just gonna replicate. So let's go right hand. Back, right, and so this is why understanding the structure is really helpful because then you can draw your right hand while you're, you know, doing something, or let's say you're drawing a comic character um, while uh, you're drawing it with your right hand. Let's say so. I'm creating this little loaf of bread thing again. Maybe I should have moved it over so I can fit my thumb in there. This maybe this thumb is gonna be. Let's say. Put my thumb in here. Okay. Ask, is there a way to judge the length of the fingers with respect to the length of the bread shape? Um, I, you know, there, it's fairly close. Uh, you know, the, the, this bread shape is a bit bigger than the fingers themselves. You, know, you can kind of see if I can. So there's, you know, just a tiny bit bigger. I guess it's, I, I, there's probably somebody who's worked out a system for that, um, but it's just, you know, even if they were the same size, right? Like, let's say you measured this size here, it wouldn't be too bad, because this area down here is, is where your wrist kind of starts taking over, and it's not uncommon to see kind of, you know, like the hand just kind of blend into the wrist a little bit. Like, we often don't see the wrist unless, like, the hand is bent or kind of crooked or you know whatever um that's a good question i haven't I haven't thought of that some again what's so interesting about teaching things is for me it makes me aware of how much knowledge that i have in here that i don't even remember learning it's such a like you know just just you know it's like when did you learn like do you remember learning the alphabet you know like it's stuff that happened so long ago that that I just know it, but I don't even really know how I know it. Um, I think about that kind of stuff all the time since we have a very young daughter upstairs. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna make some of these fingers a little bit slimmer here. And again, I'm drawing the hand that is drawing so I don't like it's very hard to use that hand as reference which is, you can see my fingers have gotten a little bit wider than maybe they should be um, but you know once I've kind of got this thing in I think this thumbs a little bit big Some little adjustments. Okay. And then let's do 
the right hand, the palm of the right hand. The same thing. Okay, and how do I want to do the fingers spread open? I don't, don't have I done the, oh, I did do the fingers close, I don't know, let's, uh, Let's do the, um, what is the, what is the name of that, the Vulcan, uh, peace sign that Spock does, I don't even, I don't know what that, there's, there's a trivia right there, so here's one finger, two fingers, Let's see, so you can see, I'm, this is why the benefit of actually draw, starting from the interior helps, right? So I should have started right here and done this. I've got a little bit... Uh, these fingers want to be together, don't they? Okay. Got a lot of lines... Oh, this is that. Okay, I was going to say, what am I doing here? Um, okay, so this is the longest finger. All right, this is my pointer finger, index finger. Here's my ring finger. And then my pinky finger. And, okay. So now I'm just going to go over here. I was going to try showing how to draw hands from the side. So, that's the basic structure of the hands, right? Now, hmm, let me think about uh, if we can get this in here. That's interesting. Okay, thinking, well, okay, so let me, th what my thinking is for, for next class, what I want to show you is how to draw hands, you know, like gripping and pointing and doing all sorts of different kinds of things. Um, so... I just don't, just don't want to get too carried down that path today. You know, I think the, the Albert Dewar drawing could be... I'll just leave that up here while I get uh, it sorted. Um, could be useful for us to try drawing this. So... So is everybody ready to move on here?
So what I would suggest, if you can draw this kind of thing quickly, you know, if you set yourself a timer and say, I'm going to do each one of these in five minutes. So this is a 20 minute exercise. And then you say to yourself, okay, let's try to draw all of them in 10 minutes. So two and a half minutes each, all right? And you do it again, try to do it in eight minutes, you know, two minutes each. And to get each of these to this level that quickly, like that would be huge. You would instantly be better at drawing hands than most artists, quite frankly most artists you know there's a reason if you look at comic books you'll often see heroes with their hands in their pockets or often their 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 hands are in fists because fists are in a way easier to draw fingers open because when you're trying to draw a hand kind of pointing at the I'm going to show you how to do some of this stuff next week it's tricky to do that kind of thing right so artists often do whatever they can to avoid you know, putting hands on hips and, you know, so it's just, it always cracks me up. Anyway, so if you can practice that, that would be super helpful. Okay, so let's move on to this Albrecht Dürer image. Um, and I, well, let's, we're going to work from the structure. I'll show you the structure and then we can draw a version of it up on top. So, the, the next step to, um, to drawing, because uh, you can see this, these, uh, I don't think I can replicate, <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, pretty close. So, these hands aren't like this, which is what we've been drawing so far. These hands are like that, right? So, we got more of a three quarters, this finger is like that. More of a three-quarter view, right? So this is kind of like the the drawing of the face from the three-quarter. So how do we do this, right? So we're going to do a drawing inspired by the Albrecht Dürer image. It may not look exactly like it, but just so we can understand the structure, this is what we're going to do. So let's first imagine we're going to draw this bread shape in here. Right, so it might be easiest to kind of locate that the the bend in the wrist to help you. Right, so we've got this bend in the wrist. Right, and we've got this shape is roughly like you can see that, that this vein that's going kind of right down the middle of the hand. That's a good, you know. Um, Thing we can use to kind of help create these outer lines. All right. Um, this, like, the, I keep calling the the bread or the was maybe a little bit too high. All right. I'm gonna. So I'm just kind of shaving a bit off to make it a little bit shorter. Um, looks okay. Okay. So, it's um. It's also what we call like foreshortened, which means um, just like, let's say this eraser, as I kind of turn it, this length appears to get shorter, right? So, and then we see this side. So we now we're seeing this part of the hand and kind of like the sides of the fingers we didn't see before. So we see this. Now this is where we're going to go to next week. What we're going to we're going to do is kind of turn this into a bit of a box. All right. So if you imagine there being, or I guess this would be more like we kind of like this shape, just drawing a little bit darker so you can see it. All right. So here's this side right if you imagine that shape okay so similarly if let's say this is the middle 
right? We've got these fingers and they're kind of, they're not just pointing straight, but they're kind of bending down a little bit because he's got, you know, the, the hands look like they're kind of apart, right? So that's kind of creates that, it's kind of hard to <laughs> bend my body in that way, but they're kind of arcing in a bit, right? So I'm just kind of putting those lines so you can see. Okay, so we've got these. Let's kind of think about this as we're kind of almost, we'll kind of draw it like as if it's flat on here. So we've got this finger, this finger, right? And then we've got this finger and this finger. All right, notice I'm just sort of just drawing them kind of like Wolverine's claws or something, right? Okay, so let's draw these kind of knuckles again. I'm not even looking at the at the image. I'm just getting trying getting the structure down and showing myself that I can kind of get these fingers in kind of a rough position. So if this is that shape, let me imagine this is also the side of that finger, if that makes sense. Okay. And then likewise, we have, let's say there was, this is the pad on the inside and here, and then we've got the thumb here, all right? And then so we've got two of these different joints, all right? We've got this one, this one, and the thumb coming up here and the thumb is kind of out a little bit. Okay, we're gonna worry about the other hand shortly. So, just thinking about all these different joints. So, now we've got the basic, basic, basic structure in place. Now we can look at the original image here and see what changes we wanna make. Okay, well, we can, if we've, let's say, I'm always looking for, you know, um, places that I can kind of hang my hat on. And to, let's say I like where this thumb is, but I'm gonna need to make a little bit of a change here, right? You see how this kind of bulges out here? And then he's got this thumb, like this is the joint here, and then he's got the thumb kind of coming out this way, almost as if this is one big arc. Kind of like this. I'm just gonna draw this darker so you can see. I may even redraw this. Well, sometimes it is helpful to redraw something again. I was gonna say, maybe I'll redraw it a second time while we're working on it, but so that I, but anyway. So let's look. So let's say we're trying to recreate this drawing as accurately as possible on this page, right? We're still we're getting these joints in here. Now let's see, right? So this thumb, how close does it come to this first joint here in this uh, index finger? Well, it's a little bit higher. So there's one joint, right? So let's say we, if we kind of do that bony architecture Right, that's one arc there. Maybe I'll just make it a little bit darker so people can see. And you can also see how this line kind of curves almost out like that, right? And then this finger is kind of coming down in, so it kind of goes like this, and like that. Maybe even more dramatically, but we'll get there. Okay. Now he's got these the, these two fingers, the, the, these joints. Actually, this is quite long, so we'll just follow his lead here. All right, and then we've got this other one like that. All right, so if this one, two. Okay, so let's figure out, so this is, 
top of one knuckle, top of, or not knuckle, uh, finger joint. So where's this other one? It's kind of around here, right? And the other joint is here. Actually, he's got, these, these are long fingers he's drawing, so let's keep on going. really see this finger kind of coming up, right, coming almost like up and over that one. Okay, and then this one, that finger joint is here, you know, it's like almost around the same length as that thumb, and then to here. So let's oh, he's got this here. It's not really evident where that is, and then this other finger. Anyway. Um, and this is also likewise kind of coming up. So, now this is again the side of the finger, All right, and then the side of the, of the hand, All right, it kind of comes in and flows right into that finger. And then this now comes, now what's the angle of that wrist? We can kind of see in, in the shirt there. Kind of comes a little more like that, really. I think something like that. Same thing. Where does that other one go? It's something like that. Okay. And uh, maybe we'll just quickly put in a little bit of effort into this clothing. We're not going to get into the all of the veins and, the, and this incredible shading on these fingers. Um, just under, I mean, understanding this structure enough is beyond what most people are doing. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw roughly in the, the flesh here now that we've got the basic sketch in. And then well, maybe we'll have a little bit of time to how I would do the other hand in here. Okay, so let's just, I'm gonna quickly get this fabric in. So as I said that using that white pencil uh, could be useful if you wanted to draw on a different colored piece of paper. Right, so he's using this blue, and I believe it's like a handmade paper that he made. Again, you go back 500 years ago, and it's not like paper was particularly common. Actually, a lot of artists would be drawing on rabbit skin. Um, so that was way more common. Like a lot of old manuscripts in Europe were done on rabbit skin make it super thin. You could make it so thin that it was basically transparent. Okay. Which is also why a lot of um, draw, like very few drawings from that period of time, like or from any period in, in the deep past have survived. Not for 
multiple reasons. Um, is it, you know, historically drawing wasn't, uh, was always, has always been really seen as a means into another end and not um, useful in and of itself. Like people often didn't collect drawings or save them. They were often just used for an artist to help get the composition right and then they'd figure it out and then they'd move on. Um, so, you know, so often drawings would just be left on the floor and Maybe somebody would scoop them up and, and uh, save them, or artists would draw over them, or literally wash the drawing off the surface. Um, because if it was like a piece of rabbit skin, you could just kind of give it a good scrub and all the... the uh, the lines and stuff would just r would rub right off, right? Okay, so there's one hand. What are we doing? Yeah, Heidi says the palm of the hand is easier to draw than the back of the hand. That's true because the palm of the hand, you know, we have all of these kind of wrinkles that are, you know, they're, they're lines. They're literally kind of lines that are fairly, that are easy for us to see into place. We come onto this side, like the drawing we're doing right here. Now, there's much, there's no distinct lines. Like we have these little veins right here and wrinkles, which is why, you know, Dewar did an absolutely magnificent job. Like we can see all, like, I mean, you could take this drawing that he did and, and do like a police lineup and you could, find like who's got a vein uh, that's kind of runs right down the middle like that like and you could you know it's like a fingerprint the way you know it's so it's so specific he's really drawing carefully um, whereas you know we can fairly quickly kind of lay in some of these lines and we kind of see where they go that's that's great yeah very perceptive thanks Heidi okay so let's quickly Think about drawing this other hand in here. So maybe this is kind of a bonus points, but so we don't see the whole other hand in here, which is gonna make it a little bit tricky, but we can kind of use this same kind of thing as a guidance, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm laying out, you know, this, uh, this outer edge that we see right here. Right? And then he's got almost like they match up pretty closely. All right, so then this tells me that that's the other side of this hand and that the that kind of bread thing, you know, technically lines up around here. We do see this other little thumb peeking out over here. All right. Um, we haven't talked about bending the fingers yet, but fairly straightforward. But like, let's say if this hand was laying flat against the other one, it would come up to about here. He's now got this finger bending, All right? So we've got one joint here and then we've got another joint here. finger, I guess this other one is kind of here. So we're just kind of using what we've already drawn as kind of to give us tips on how to execute all of this. And then, I mean, this is, this is by also, by the way, like a master drawing, like acknowledges, you know, one of the 10 best drawings a human has ever made, you know, and we're trying to draw this in our, in our basic drawing class. So if you don't nail it a hundred percent or even 10%, you're, you're in good company. Many, many people have 
try to reproduce this image to various levels of success, right? Okay, so we've got this side of the hand, and um, we can even see here, that, so this is the, this wrinkle here, so there's a bit of that kind of bubble shape, um, pad shape in there. And he's got that finger kind of pops up, and out, and in. other uh, ring finger kind of comes here So we'll kind of finish up here in a few minutes. If there's anybody who wants to share any, I don't think anyone sent any drawings recently for any uh, feedback. So unless somebody sends one in the next few minutes, we'll kind of uh, wrap up. Um, okay. Um, if you're, if you find this video or any other videos I've made helpful, um, like and subscribe to the channel so you'll be notified of when the next video is up. There'll be another, we'll have another class just like this on Thursday, a couple days from now. And we're going to, as I said, we're going to work on drawing hands dynamically. So punching, grabbing, pointing, pointing like at you know, the camera or the viewer. So how do we do all of this kind of stuff? That's what we're gonna do on Thursday. So we're gonna kind of take this basic stuff and just, you know, um, take it to the next step, really. So any kind of drawing you can do in the meantime would be helpful. So like and subscribe to the channel, like this video before you, you tune out. If you wanna make a small contribution um, via PayPal, there's a link in the description and I'm working on the Patreon as we speak. So that will be up and uh, I'm working on the shop for my website as well. So all sorts of different ways that you'll be able to support the channel as well. Um, let me see here. I was leaving that image up. Okay. So I think um, we'll call it a show. Again, we could go in here and do some shading, but we've, it's been a, kind of a long show that we've already kind of done a bunch of drawings in. The more that you spend time doing this, the easier it gets. Like, and, and well-drawn hands are super satisfying for people to see. And it's also really satisfying for you as an artist to draw. Like if you can pull off a hand in your drawing, um, it just, it's so empowering because often, like I said, most artists try to hide them and put them in, you know, people, characters walking around with their hands in their pants. And, um, and so it's uh, just spending that little bit extra time will just gonna make you feel like, especially, you know, if you're, I don't know if it, if I did any little drawings of hands at any other point recently, but you know, you can maybe, maybe next week I'll kind of show how to do, you know, if you're drawing little tiny hands, how to draw that really kind of fast and kind of just make that just feel satisfying to, so you, anyway, I think you get what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, I, I am uh, getting hungry. So, Thank you everybody for tuning in to another one of uh, our shows. And um, I th also really, again, I really appreciate all of the, the, the comments people are leaving in the comments section and that engagement of everybody supporting one another. Uh, 
so that's really great to see that we've got a little community of, uh, of artists that are working away. And, and I know, again, there's, there's lots of people that watch the show afterwards, and I get emails from people all the time um, saying, uh, expressing their appreciation. So uh, that's just a good reminder that if you miss a show and you want to follow up or repeat a show, um, that those videos are there for you to enjoy at at your convenience and feel free to share these with your friends because there's and lord knows there's lots of as i say my art students i wish some of these kids would sit down and do some of this stuff uh and and, and practice it more because that's really the secret to getting better and better anyway i've rambled on more than enough and uh, making everybody's ears bleed so We'll see you on our next episode where we're going to take this and really learn how to draw hands doing all sorts of fun stuff. And that's where it gets really exciting. Uh, okay, so have yourself a wonderful rest of your afternoon, evening, morning, and we'll, we'll see you next class. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>